before I introduce our panelists today, um, I want to give out some few housekeeping rules. Number one, if there's any questions of the panelists or the instructors present to, to the audience, please respond to them in the chat. And if you have any questions to the instructors or to the panelists, uh, please put them in the Q&A section and then some of of our panelists as well as the instructors will respond to you during the Q&A section. So with that, I will introduce Mr. Karim Chata, who is a cybersecurity professional, and he'll take us through best case practices for, for members of the education sector. So welcome, Mr. Karim, and uh, take it away. As I was introduced, my name is Karim. I'm a cybersecurity expert here in Tanzania. I'm a CEO of an organization called Hackett Consultancy. Um, I've managed to write four cybersecurity books. So I'm also into a little bit of um, into writing books and authoring. I'm a public speaker, as I'm doing right now, trainer. I do blog because I have my own cybersecurity um, uh, blog. And I'm a CTF player. So these are just cybersecurity games, which as cybersecurity professions, used to practice and put our skills to, you know, useful uh, use. Those are on, on your uh, right hand side. Those are my experience from different parts of the world. When you come to um, USA and Europe, I've managed to attain the um, various experience from various uh, organizations, as you can see from, uh, from the screen in front of you. So uh, today we're going to talk about cybersecurity in the education sector, which uh, I believe majority of you are in right now. So if, uh, I'm aware that currently you guys have already gone through um, introduction to cybersecurity. You've talked about cyber attacks. You've talk, talked about effects of cyber attacks um, and those type of things. So today my job here is to come and talk about the best practices that you guys can follow in order to protect yourselves and your students while you know, uh, teaching each other uh, the topics, different topics that you guys are trying to pass on the knowledge to. But before we begin, I'd like to ask a couple of questions. So please, whoever um, can answer the question, feel free to just answer the question so that we can proceed. So question to everyone, number one, who is most likely to be targeted by a cyber uh, attack or a cyber criminal? Can anybody just, you know, roughly answer that? There is no right or wrong answer, but I just want to, you know, understand where you guys, what's your perspective on this? Give me the response from the chat so that we can, you know, proceed. Um, so Masi Gatera says anyone who is using the cyberspace, People yeah. who lack knowledge of cybersecurity, teachers, school yeah. administrators, and anyone really, the user, so they have um, an idea. Yeah, definitely. Um, all the answers yeah. are correct, but to make it short, is everybody is prone to attacks or can be targeted by cyber criminal because they, they, they don't discriminate anybody. Question number two Whose job is it when it comes to cybersecurity? <laughs> yes. I see you guys are really trained well. I don't know even what I'm, am I doing here. Yeah, so we can proceed. In the education sector, let's look at um, what the education sector has. So in the education sector, they deal with huge amount of data. So for example, the intellectual, I mean, personal identifiable information, they deal with data of the, of the students, they deal with um, different type of information generally. And then also in the education sector, they, they possess different type of uh, systems and technologies in place. So it will be the model where um, students and teacher, teachers can uh, log in and uh, either set exams and things like that. They do uh, possess websites, so the university websites, et cetera, and also electronic devices, the Wi-Fi and all those type of uh, electronic devices. There are two categories that we are going to focus here today. So that's the teachers and then the students themselves. We need to understand from these two categories, the teachers and the, and, and the students, what do they do generally? So when you look at the teachers, let me say their main job is to set exams, post grades, upload results, uh, sometimes do research, send emails to students, um, do online meetings, etc. 
On the student side, the job is to uh, do the exams either online or on a physical premises, uh, check the results, attend online classes, etc. On these two categories, here are the list uh, um, cyber threats which they are exposed to due to the activities that they are doing. So there is social engineering in the context of phishing, malicious programs of viruses and malwares. There's spams, denial of services due to the systems that they are using. So it will be the Moodles or website itself, uh, password attacks. So sometimes us, I mean, not us, sometimes cyber criminals, they tend to uh, try and guess your password or create a list of possible passwords and try to attack your, your account. Uh, hacks, same thing, and espionage. Sometimes they do affect your systems and um, they do tend to steal data that are, are in the system that they hacked. Let's look at the safety measures that are going to protect people who are in the education sectors from the cyber threats. Here is some of the lists. So number one, let me just categorize one, two, three is generally everything associated with passwords. So one of the best practices is um, use, don't use your passwords in more than one system. So let's say, for example, you have um, your Moodle and also you have uh, your school email address. Now, instead of using a single password for the two, two, two um, platforms, it's advised to use different uh, different passwords for different systems or platforms that you're trying to get into. Reason behind is whenever a hacker manages to get um, a password to one of your system, will will not be able to. Uh, they are associated to you. Uh, now that's where uh, another issue comes with. Uh, a lot of people tend to forget. Uh, their passwords. So the best solutions for that is to have password managers, which are going to help you to store all your passwords. And uh, all you have to remember is just one password. So that's the advantage of password managers. You can have different passwords for different platforms that uh, you're trying to connect to. So it could be your social medias, your emails, it will be your, um, your learning platforms, etc. It will store all that, but all you need to remember is just one to access the password manager. And then use strong passwords. What that means is you're not supposed to use passwords that are guessable, guessable passwords. So those type of passwords are not good. You're supposed to also use passwords that are not associated with you. So that's another aspect in relation to passwords. Uh, another point is uh, protect your files with passwords. The reason behind is uh, to, to, there's something in information security called CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. On our context, you're going to uh, focus on con confidentiality and integrity. So for, for you to protect your, 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 um, your uh, what should it, files, uh, which you, let's say, for example, you had set exams, you need to uh, protect the examinations question so that nobody can have access to it, then you, you have to uh, either zip it and then have a password associated with it. So that whenever you send it to, let's say, party B and a hacker manage, manages to intercept that data, since you've already inserted a password in, 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 the, in the zipped file, then the the hacker wouldn't be able to get any information. So that's where the confidentiality part comes in. Um, be careful with the links that you click. Now this is associated, associated with phishing. Sometimes uh, they could send, for example, if a hacker is targeting, let's say University of Birmingham and you're, you're a lecturer in University of Birmingham, then what a hacker will do is to try and gather um, employees who are working there and send phishing emails and pretend to, let's say, be, um, for example, the principal. And then we'll tell you probably let's click this link in order to, let's say, view a document that you are supposed to view and things like that. Now, when you click it, then you, most likely it's going to redirect you into a website where the hacker is uh, controlling that website and he's gonna infect your device with different malicious programs. And that's something that we don't want. Uh, 
be careful with the online resources that uh, you guys share, because we share uh, resources like links, uh, reading materials, but are you really sure that the platform that you've obtained those resources are, you know, are uh, useful, uh, no, not useful, are, uh, uh, what's the word? Proper platform to do so, because some, uh, some platforms online are being owned by hackers. So those are the things that you guys should be checking on. Please update your system uh, frequently whenever you see an update uh, notification. Same goes to your application. Protect your devices with uh, security solutions like antiviruses, firewalls, um, and such type of solutions. You need to back up your data. So whenever, um, let's say your system has been hacked by a ransomware, or it has crashed in one way or another, then you still have a backup to all your data that you had stored into your computer. And then locking files to avoid any tampering of data. That's where integrity uh, comes in. Now, let's look at the, let me say the practical bit of everything that we've talked about so you guys can have a proper understanding of what I've been saying. Uh, let me try and play this video. But let me just proceed and then I'll try to share the video itself so that you guys can watch later at the end of the, of the I mean, at the end of the session. Uh, use different passwords for different systems, as I said. Now here is where the password managers come in to help you um, store all, uh, all complex passwords and you don't have to remember any of them. Now looking at Keepers, as a first time user, uh, you have an option to either create a database or if you already have the database which had your passwords, then you can open existing database. How does it look inside? This is how uh, KeePass looks. So it has all the information about the, the website that you visited, uh, your username, and it also stores your password. So that's, that's the function of password managers. And this is how KeePass specifically look, uh, looks like. But as I listed here, these are just different types of um, password manager. You're not limited to key pass. You can also explore the other ones. Um, as I said initially, share, um, share resources from uh, repeatable sources, especially online resources. So we can share resources from ResearchGate. So the, the, the research that other professors have done, you can share it with your students. Uh, YouTube, it's a very repeatable source. And then this GitHub. So these are just some of the repeatable sources, but not limited to. Um, also, restrain yourself from uh, sharing links from non-repeatable uh, resources. So one of them being torrent, because in torrent it's not really trustworthy. A lot of people, uh, store, I mean, send or store a lot of uh, resources in there, and some of them could be malicious. That's the problem of torrent sites. Now, a lot of people currently, their systems get hacked because they download uh, content from torrents. So please avoid doing that. Uh, don't click on phishing links. So the best approach to this, whenever you receive any link or file to download, you have, let's, say, let's use link as an example. Instead of directly clicking on that link, let's say um, person X sent you um, a link saying that the, the let's say Tesla is giving away 10 million shillings. Now, instead of clicking on that link, you'd rather go and open a browser, type Tesla prices, and then search if really Tesla is offering such type of offers or prizes. If not, then you already know that that is a phishing link. So try and make it as a habit so that you guys don't fall bait for these phishing links. So the, the image that you see currently is um, one of my friends, she, she received an email from that person called brandy at glazertech.com pretending to be the US immigration. So she didn't open it because she didn't apply any immigration. Uh, she didn't make any immigration applicant to go to the US. So that was where she was lucky. Two, um, most of you guys do produce uh, different type of contents, exams, documents, which needs to be protected. So one of the software that you guys can use is called 7-Zip. So 7-Zip is just an, a, a program that zips your document. Now, in order to do that, you can go to Google, type download 7-Zip, click the first link. It's going to open the below page that you, you see. 
And then based on your computer's uh, specification, if it's a 64-bit or a 32-bit, you download the executable. Once that's done, you execute it on your system, and then 7-zip will be installed. So with 7-zip, you can, um, in the background, you can see a zip file. In order to open it, you just right click uh, on the do zipped document, uh, go to 7-zip and then choose uh, either of the, the, the option. If you want to open it or if you want to extract contact contents, sorry, um, and other applications. You can even uh, lock the part, I mean, the file using 7-zip. So to pro provide a uh, protection mechanism of the contents of that file. And once open the below image is how it looks when you open the zip file with, uh, with 7-zip. So lock files uh, so that you can avoid people editing it. Now that's also where the integrity bit comes in. There's a, a software called Nitro PDF. So we are looking at uh, different Microsoft products. So we are going to check uh, your file, Microsoft Word, Excel, and many other more. So for Nitro PDF, you just have to um, open your PDF file with um, Nitro PDF. Once you log in, or oh, once the uh, file has been opened, on your top navigation bar where it's written protect, you click there and then you say password, uh, password security. You click there and then you'll be uh, prompted to enter a password. Once you enter your password using the below, below um, checklist, the permissions require password to change anything, that's gonna limit people from um, copying content of uh, whatever content is in that PDF file. So that's a protection mechanism for you guys. So you could uh, contents with other lecturers that probably you don't want to share. I mean, you don't want it to be copied by any other any other person. So you can just encrypt the the file, and once you send it to to the uh, to the person B or second party, then they cannot do anything with that document since you've already installed password on that file. When you go to Microsoft Excel. When you open uh, Microsoft, Microsoft Excel itself, on your top left-hand side, you'll see the file tab. You click it, and then it will open the tab that you can see right now on your screen. You click on Info, Select, Protect uh, Workbook, and then there's different option on uh, different encryption mechanism that you want to use. So if you click, let's say, Encrypt with Password, it's going to encrypt the whole um, Excel file. If you say protect current sheet, it's just going to protect the single sheet that you've created at that moment. When you open others, then it will do that. So there's all, all these encryption options that you have. And this uh, the, 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 uh, the down there is just uh, steps on how you do it, as I, ex how I was explaining previously. On Microsoft Word, it's the same thing. You click on file, go to info, select protect document, and then encrypt with password. We're going to see these uh, steps practically. I'm going to, there's going to be a practical session for it. Uh, Microsoft uh, uh, PowerPoint, it's also the same thing. Sorry, there's been a typo error there. Okay, another best practice is uh, you have to back up your data. As I said initially, you don't know what's gonna happen uh, in the long run. Either your computer is going to crash, or your computer is going to be infected by ransomware, then you need to back up your data so that even if all this uh, misfortune happens, you can still recover your data and proceed where you left off. So the best methods are you can use a USB. If you feel that the USB is small, then you can go and buy a hard drive. Or if you feel that all these USBs and hard drives, you can lose them, then the best option will be on the cloud, backing up all your data on your cloud. A good example is Google Drive. Updating your system. So um, I'm assuming all of you are using Windows systems. So on Windows, on your bottom right-hand side, there's that search bar where you can just type update and then it pops up an update system. I mean, uh, update tab, let me put it that way. Once you've uh, opened it, 
you can click on check for updates. It's going to check if there's any update that needs to be done on your system. And once that's done, you can click update and it will update automatically. That's one method. The second method is um, sometimes Windows do send um, alerts automatically on your computers that you need to update your systems. And one of the example is down there on the blue, um, blue screenshot. So if you see that thing that I've pointed with the, um, with the arrow, you need to click on that. It means that you have an update in place. So the, the reason why we are encouraging people to update because hackers tend to look for vulnerabilities on your systems. When I say vulnerabilities, I mean weaknesses, which they can exploit and get access into your computers. If you update, it means you're closing all the problems that are associated with that version of your computer and protecting yourself from cyber criminals. So that's another best practice. So whenever you see an update on your um, computer or let me just say electronic devices, then it's best practice to update it as immediate as possible. Uh, not only limited to the device itself, but sometimes softwares, like for example, you could find um, WhatsApp is having an update. So it's also advisable to update all your applications. Security solutions. Security solutions are here to protect your, your, your devices, your system, your data in general. So some of the security solutions are antiviruses and pop-up blockers. So the antiviruses helps to protect your system from viruses, uh, worms, malwares, etc. all these harmful programs, which are gonna affect your computer, make it slow, etc. Uh, one of the antivirus is Kaspersky. There's a lot of out there. Don't limit yourself to Kaspersky. Do your research. I'm sure you're going to find a lot on Google. From now on, you should make Google your friend. Any query or issue that you feel that uh, needs a little bit of clarity, you can Google that. Google will give you uh, reasonable answers for your problem. Pop-up blocker. Uh, pop-up blocker, it helps to block all the pop-ups, malicious pop-ups, especially when you're browsing on the internet. Uh, for example, recently uh, I got one pop-up from my computer where it said that um, your MacBook is infected by viruses, click here to clean your MacBook. But apparently my computer is Windows, so you already see the problem of all these malicious pop-ups. Once you click it, you end up, um, you end up downloading viruses on your machine and you infect all your data and you're done. So it's very important to have pop-up blockers on your browsers. Um, apart from using um, uh, antiviruses, you can also, uh, because in Windows, it comes with pre-installed antivirus, which is Windows Defender. It's an antivirus slash firewall. It, it does the same job. But others, sometimes they may feel that it's not good for, for people who are technical. They want more advanced features, for example. So they'll, they opt to move to other options. But I thought that I should explain that even in your computers right now, it does have this pre-installed um, Microsoft firewall slash antivirus. So you're, you're currently being protected by, um, by Microsoft and their product. So in order to get access to this, um, antivirus, what you can do is on your search bar type defender, the first word that's going to appear is Windows security. When you click on it, it's going to take you onto the next uh, tab where it's going to have different option and shows you what would you want to do? Do you want to scan the, your computers to look for virus? What do you want uh, us to do? So you can click on virus and threat protection on your right hand side. And then it's going to give you all different options. If you want to perform a full scan onto your system or a partial scan, what do you want to do? And then that's what you click, depending on your desire at the moment. And then uh, these online classes. We all know that due to Corona, things have already changed around the world, the way we operate. And we've uh, gone to uh, majority of our work has been pushed to online. Now, um, there is an issue with, um, not an issue, there was previously a problem of an attack that was happening on Zoom, which is called Zoom bombing, whereby an attacker will gain access into your session and then he could either um, remove you as an uh, instructor from teaching or interrupt your session and just do all these malicious things. 
as you can see on your screen, is showing who is this, you know? So those type of issues that happen with a Zoom bombing. So the best practice for this in order to avoid Zoom bombing is to, number one, because, uh, okay, let me just explain with the solution. Number one is to, whenever you are creating the Zoom link, you must select register, and then we, we all know that when you register into the sessions, it will send you automatically um, the registration link on your emails based on what you had registered. Now, um, a little bit of, let me just say technical explanation. What happens is online, there are things called chatbots. These are just programs which get into, uh, into um, the internet to scavenge for different type of information. And one of them is to look for Zoom links. Now, once they get access to the Zoom links, they, they, they access your session and that's when the attacker does all these malicious uh, activities on your, on your online uh, class. So the best uh, practice would be to request everybody to register before uh, receiving the online link. So once that happens, because a chatbot is, is a chatbot, sorry, it's just a program. It doesn't think as a human. So whenever it sees that there's all those registration that it has, it has to do, it will then pick that link. So that's how uh, Zoom later on introduced, you know, the the registration process before getting the Zoom link. That's how we got here right now. It's because of the Zoom bombings that have been have been happening previously, which uh, Zoom didn't have that feature. So yeah. That's it for today's session. I hope it has been very helpful. Uh, I think it's time for Q&A. Uh, Malusi can uh, help me with that. So just ask all your questions. Feel free. I'm here to answer uh, all your questions that you have as much as possible before the session ends. Um, in the meantime, those are my contacts. Feel free to get in touch with me anytime that you feel that you want to, you have a question, uh, etc. So yeah, let me just check the Q and A. So uh, Edward asked, can he, uh, I demonstrate how I can use password manager? Yes, I'll do that in a few. Uh, what's the difference between HTTP and HTTPS? So HTTP, uh, these are websites which are not encrypted, they're not secure. So meaning that any information that you pass onto the internet, a hacker can see it in plain text. But HTTPS, uh, the S means SSL, so secure socket layer. So what that does, or that piece of technology, what it does is protect all the traffic that is tra traveling from the, from the internet so that whenever a hacker can gain access to that, then they wouldn't be able to see what data is being transmitted. So those are the difference between HTTP and HTTPS. One is secure, the other one is not secure. In uh, layman's language, you can say, uh, we all know suites. So HTTP will be the suites which have been removed from its cover. But HTTPS are all suites which are having its covered on. So that's the difference. I hope it makes sense. That's Abdul. Okay. Um, Jaya Kant. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. We can have all our password in the password manager. Don't you think it's easy for the hacker to break the password of the password manager and get all the password? What can we do? So um, even when you're creating your, your, your password for your password manager, as I said in my presentation, you, you, you're, these, um, you're not supposed to create weak passwords. So passwords which are number one related to you, because most of us, in order to remember these passwords, we create passwords which are related to us. For example, our date of birth, uh, the name of our dogs, uh, the name of our grandmas, etc. So those are weak passwords. We're not supposed to use those as passwords. We can either use passphrases or we can uh, create a more complex passwords which have um, a mixture of alphabets, letters, uh, numbers, sorry, um, special characters, et cetera. That will make it a little bit more complex for a hacker to gain access to your database. Uh, there's a question from Francis. 
The password protected PDF file can lose protection when pages are extracted. How do we, uh, sorry, uh, this question is a little bit vague. Francis, uh, I'd, I'd like you to um, unmute yourself and uh, explain a little bit better. I'm not understanding your question here. How safe are antiviruses softwares? Uh, this is Nafilu. Well, Nafilu, Antivirus, uh, antivirus softwares are very safe, but you're supposed to pick reputable antivirus softwares because even hackers have skills to create a rogue antivirus. So you're supposed to uh, pick the most popular and uh, reputable antivirus softwares. Please confirm that the softwares that exists that can be used to remove an encryption on document Yes, they are there, uh, but it will take time. They'll need to password crack those documents in order to remove the, uh, I mean, to remove the encryption. And which is very difficult because the password that you've uh, used to encrypt, you are the only one who knows it. So it's going to take them a pretty long time, unless if it's a hacker who has time, uh, then yeah. Can you retrieve data after a cyber attack? Yes, that's a question from Joseph. Yes, you can do that. Um, and the only way you can retrieve your data is if you've backed up your data, which I've explained. There's different ways of backing up your data. Uh, so Peter asked what form of a good uh, antivirus since we have many. So there are a lot of antivirus, yes, but some of them is Kaspersky, um, even the inbuilt one from uh, Microsoft, the Windows Defender is also good. So there's a huge uh, reputable antiviruses out there. You can also do your research on that. There's a lot of information online. Um, what is the difference between phishing and farming? So um, what's the analogy should I use? So, so basically phishing is um, is usually done on on uh, on not a huge scale compared to farming, and on the farming perspective, it it tends to go for specific targets, not everybody. So uh, that's the difference with fishing and farming. It's the farming is larger; it's on a larger scale compared to fishing. Fishing most of the time it it usually focuses on an individual. Please share again your email. Okay. Okay, I think um, I'll do that. That's Samuel. I can just type it on the chat. I hope you don't. You're not attempting to hack me. Yeah, that's that's my email. Um, and also uh, another, uh, let me say, protection mechanism that you guys can can, can use is to install two-factor authentication on your systems so that you can be able to, you know, even if a hacker can gain access to your password and tries to log in, is that extra layer of uh, protection that he needs to go through. So two-factor authentication is very, uh, very important. Uh, yes, I'll share the video. Sorry, I'll show the video. Uh, okay, so before I continue answering the questions because they are coming in a lot, so let me just do a, a little bit of demo of uh, the password the password manager, KeePass, how it works. And then I'll do a little bit of uh, some few seconds demonstration of uh, uh, what is called how to protect your files and documents. So this is LinkedIn. Now in LinkedIn, um, I'll try to sign in to my account. So what I've done through on my on, on my top right where the uh, CASA is, you can see there's that little pop-up that says keep us uh, browser. So it's an integration between my, my browser and the database that I have on my local machine. So what, what, what happens is whenever I go to a platform which I've saved the credentials and the URL of uh, LinkedIn, like the way I'm doing, once you click on the profile, you can see keep us, it's popping up here on the show password. Once I click on that, I'll click on click LinkedIn and sign into my account. So if you first sign in, it will ask you either do you save the, the, what is it called? Do you want to save the credentials and the link and all those information or what do you want to do? 
So that's how uh, password managers work, especially with this demonstration, keep us. That's how it works. And it's very easy, very straightforward and simple to use. So that's one method. Uh, apart from signing in automatically, uh, let me just share another screen. Just give me a moment. So this is how Keepus looks. I hope you guys can see it. So uh, here is where I've managed to store all my passwords. So for example, he, here where it's written Keepus browser uh, password, it stored all information. So as from the demonstration that I've shown you from LinkedIn, it has the URL path to the login page of LinkedIn. It has my username, it has my password. That's how uh, it collects information from, from, from the internet. So whenever it detects a familiar link, so since I've, I've already explained that there's an integration between my browser and my database. So whenever it recognizes, let's say for example, the lo login page of LinkedIn, it's when it's gonna um, automatically fill in the data that is in those uh, URL uh, login forms, or let me say, yeah, login forms. And then all you have to do is just click login. Okay. Um, another demonstration will be um, on the demos on how to encrypt different files. Yeah, here. So we have a demo there. So um, for the PDF, what I'll do is you right click on uh, the PDF file, open with Nitro PDF. So before doing that, this is my portfolio. Okay, so can you see the PDF file, right? So on your, um, on your top screen, you can see it's not even encrypted right now currently. So let me just open this PDF file with um, Nitro PDF. So let me just open with Nitro PDF. So Nitro PDF is opening. Let me just share Nitro PDF. Yeah, so this is Nitro PDF. Uh, yeah. What you, what you do if you wanna protect this document is click on protect, you select password, you click here, require password to change security set, setting, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what you're gonna do is put your password. Let me just say one, two, three, four, test. One, two, three, four, uh, four, test. Uh, so these are other settings that you can keep. Uh, so printing is not allowed. That, that's what I've kept. So whenever somebody tries to print this document, they wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, changes allowed, none. So they cannot make any changes, either if it's copy or you know those type of issues. So you click finish and you click save. Once that's done, uh, let me share the demo page. Yeah, now let's see if it has encrypted. Um, let me share the PDF, oh, no, no, yeah, this file. Yeah, so as you can see, initially before encrypting the document on your top tab here where the CASA is, sorry. Yeah, here where the CASA is, it didn't have this word encrypted. But right now, since I've already kept the password, it already, it already has that word encrypted, meaning that all the data that I have in this PDF file is secure. So whenever somebody wants to copy paste or wants, wants to print based on the uh, permissions that I've given this document, they cannot do that. So that's the function of uh, Nitro PDF. But it also has more features. So let's say, for example, to convert PDF uh, documents into a Word document and those type of issues, but th th those are not uh, our concern in this session. Our session is just about security. So that's how um, you can encrypt PDF files using Nitro PDF. Now, we already encrypted our um, PDF. Let's get to Excel. 
So Excel, uh, a lot of people use Excel for various purposes. I'm assuming perhaps some of you are using Excel to um, store students' results. Some of you are using Excel to input various type of data. So this is how you're gonna, okay, sorry. This is how you're gonna protect your um, Excel sheet. So what you're gonna do is, as I said, on your top, um, top left-hand side, you click on file. You click on file, you select info, you click on protect, encrypt with password. Our password is one, two, three, four. Sorry, my number four has issues. Yeah, four, and then we'll just repeat one, two, three, four, then test. So that's our password. It's going to ask us to confirm it. Uh, I hope I've exceeded it. One, two, three, four. Test. Okay. So we've already locked this document. Let's save it. We are good to go. So uh, let's let's try and open the file and see how it's going to react. Okay, let me just share. So this is how Excel is going to look like after encrypting it. So this demonstrates that uh, if you encrypt your files the way I've demonstrated, and let's say you send it, you're sending it to one of your um, fellow lecturers or your friends. Uh, it's just a hypothetical assumption. Once a hacker manages to get this document, it means they cannot. Uh, get access to the information that it's in because we've already protected this document. Um, okay, sorry, one, two, three, four, test. Now we are already in after inserting our password. So this is how we protect your data. So it's the same process for Microsoft Word. It's the same process for Microsoft um, PowerPoint. The, that's how you're going to protect your um, your data from hackers in general. So yeah, those are some of the demos that I've uh, that I had for you guys. Now let me see if we can uh, I can proceed answering more questions because they're 19. Okay, um, uh, Mr. Karim. Uh, yes. You don't have to answer all questions, but okay. I'm very grateful. Yes, I'm very grateful that you're able to demonstrate uh, a bit of what you talked about in your presentation. Um, thank you for covering a bit of the questions that we had in the Q and A. Um, yeah. We don't have quite a lot of time left, so we'll see if we can answer like maybe two or three, and then we we should be able to close. Yeah. Um, Yes. So, so Peter is asking, are we safe when we save passwords on web browsers that ask us to save? So should we should we save passwords on our browsers? Well, so so we're not we're not saving our passwords on the browsers, but you're saving the password base of the password manager, which is on our um our local computer. So on our it, you could put the database on your desktop. You could put your database on, um, let's say, another external uh, hard drive. It, it doesn't matter where you're putting it, but it's going to be on your computer. What the browser extension does, it just connects from the browser to your database, retrieve the information from the database, and just paste everything there. So there is no such thing as you're saving the data, the the, the usernames and passwords on the browser, but Google Chrome has that functionality. It has the ability to do, you can uh, save with Google Chrome automatically. So once you just access our website, it just pre-fills the information on, um, on the uh, username and password, password field. So these are two different concepts. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah. Are these password managers free source or otherwise? So especially the one you've just recommended or you've talked about, uh, yeah. Is it a free source? Is it free? 
it does it have a paid functionality? Um, do you mind explaining that further? Yeah, so so for this one, Keepers that I'm, I was using, it's it, it's it's um it's totally free. It's it's open source. You can download it anytime you want. But let me just say, uh, don't limit yourself to Keepers. There's a lot of uh, great password managers which I've listed on my presentation. What I'll do is I'll share the uh, the presentation with um the 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 the, the, the um your tutor. And then you guys can try to follow around uh, what I've been doing. But there's a lot of um, the password managers which are very good also apart from Keepers. So it's it's just, it's not a must for you to use what I'm using. It's just a personal preference. Also, what I can say is um, if you have any questions, uh, let me just try to share um, the last slide on the presentation. Uh, sorry, let me just rush it through. You can uh, get in touch with me. Uh, that's my number. Uh, you can get in touch with me on WhatsApp. Or um, I guess some of you would want my, my um, account handles in Instagram uh, or uh, LinkedIn or Twitter. So it's, let me just put it on the chat. On Twitter, you can get me at Kane Chatter. Uh, LinkedIn, you can get me at Kevin. Chatter. Yeah, I guess those are the best places at, uh, that you guys can find me. Um, if you want to learn a little bit in depth in terms of uh, the, 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 the personal security, I have written different content. I have a book. You can also request for my books. Also feel free to do that so that you can keep on learning. Guys, uh, thank you very much. I'm seeing a lot of thank yous. Um, I appreciate it. The session it has been very wonderful. And I'm always happy to share my knowledge and give back to the community. So I hope you guys are going to be cyber aware and cyber safe and put everything that you guys have learned, not only from me since from day one, into practice. So yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Karim, for that session. Uh, before we close, I have a few statements to make. So all questions that were unanswered, uh, all questions that were unanswered in the Q&A section as well as the chat, we will collect all of them, answer them, and send them along, along with the recording of the webinar, as well as the presentation that Mr. Karim shared with us. Um, so that presentation, of course, has his contacts, and you, you'll be able to retrieve them from the documents as well. So for all questions regarding password managers, uh, we have also shared a guide as part of the resources about how to use password various password managers. On top of the demo that Mr. Karim has shared, I believe that those guides will be of use to you. And if you still have trouble using them, we are happy to always guide you through um, using any which password manager you decide to use. But we do encourage you to use to do your research before picking one single password manager. Yeah. Then regarding questions on antivirus software, so our general stance is uh, the, in, the inbuilt antivirus solutions that come with your operating system, so be it yeah. Windows or Mac, work perfectly well, and usually there's no need to supplement them unless you believe it's a, it's a viable you know, reason, there's a viable reason to supplement. So our general stance is use the inbuilt antivirus solution that comes with the operating system. Um, so I believe that brings us to the end of our webinar. Any questions you have regarding anything you, ha you have learned so far in the course, please send them to us on Telegram, on, on our email. Uh, you can even set up a forum on the, on, the, on the MOOC platform. We'll get to you as quickly as we possibly can. And we want to, join, we want to thank you so much for joining us um, tonight. So I'm in Kenya, so it's, it's at night. So we want to thank you for joining us today. And we wish you a very good day wherever you are. So we are grateful. We'll send everything that you've seen here today, the presentation, any unanswered questions, as well as the recording of this uh, webinar.